Harlan's Wake, Part 4 Harlan slid his arms into a patched old robe. He bunched his shoulders and relaxed them with a big breath. Pain's gone. Leaning on the bedpost, Harlan began to laugh. Possessed by a devil, maybe, but thank the Lord, there's no pain. Tyler watched, speechless, from the floor, holding his ribs where his father had kicked him. Broken, and something wrong in his lungs, too. Every breath was as wet as Harlan's had been before he'd died. You let that son of a bitch do this to me? The dead man said through gritted teeth, leaning against his dresser. Michael's chest rose and fell unevenly. His skin had turned pale, but still a whisper of a smile played upon his thin white lips. I owe your son, Mr. Mr. Brown. Mr. Brown, I... I did... I did nothing. Long instilled training was the only thing that let Tyler struggle to his feet. He recognized Michael's stuttering and dull tone as signs of the Silver's inability to control his host body. The trauma of being stabbed, even compounded by the kick Tyler had given, wouldn't be near enough for this. The alien had done something that overloaded his ability to function. Uh, like raise the dead, apparently? Tyler shook his head to clear the pain in his ribs, and the shock still dulling his thoughts like a wet canvas blanket. He watched his father move. No, swagger. Angry and feeling a buzz, not moonshine, but returned health. Harlan's eyes shone with adrenaline, and whatever internal emotions were still stirred by the process of coming back to life. In the presence of his own disowned son, and an alien he thought of as a devil. But no mistake, that was Harlan Brown in there, no silver. You thought that your zombie friend would kill me, Harlan laughed, working the thought through for himself, feeling at his own skeletal ribs. I am a righteous man he bellowed, his fist hammering at the bedpost and shattering it into a thousand splinters with ease. Tyler swallowed, fighting his own internal emotions. His father, alive, with the strength of a silver. He focused again on Michael, gauging his host body's color and slowing motions. He needed help, or both silver and the body that housed him would be cold and still for good in short order. Tom turned away from Michael and reached out for his father's shoulder, concern on his face showing he expected Harlan to fall at any second. But Harlan slammed him back on the wall beside the silver with ease. Tom's concern replaced with wide eyes and open mouth. Watch that monster, boy. He's here for our souls, Harlan warned in an icy tone. But I've been ready for him. He turned to face Tyler. Been expecting you back, see? Michael's eyes fluttered. I assure, assure, Mr. Brown, I assure I have no, 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 no designs on your soul, your soul. Harlan hammered Michael with a blurring fist. He grabbed the silver's collar and smashed Michael's head to one side, then the other ferociously. I resist thee, Harlan snarled. Silver and spittle dripped from his mouth with the force of each blow. Before God, another blow. I smite thee, another blow, and Tom's knife shot out of Michael's shoulder, wheeling in the air and splattering silver across the room. Some fear from Harlan's lifetime jerked his talking corpse out of the way of the silver flow. Papa, Harlan whirled to face Tyler, pointing a finger. You want to tear us all down into sin with you? Want your daddy and your brother to burn in the pit with you? Harlan leapt at his youngest son, hands reaching for his neck with inhuman speed. Tyler heard his brother scream some warning, but military reflexes again moved his body before his brain could process what was happening. Sparring with superhumanly fast creatures hones your ability to read body language, and his father was not being at all subtle. Tyler swept with both forearms, and all Harlan's power was diverted past him to send him stumbling into the hall and onto the floor, snarling and spitting, incoherent with rage. Tyler pushed himself against the wall to Michael's side. Tom, on the other side of the alien, put his hand on his brother's chest when he reached for the blade. He took it back and stabbed it into Michael's shoulder. Don't! You're killing him, Tom! He didn't do anything to Papa, except... Except reanimate his corpse? 
lend him a fearsome speed and power with which to pour all the small-mindedness and hate his father had possessed. Nothing except bring Harlan Brown back to life to— Tyler's breath hitched in his throat with the realization. He brought him back to life so I could say goodbye. Harlan was on his feet again, something massive shaking the floor as it was thrown in time with, with a horrible rage and scream. It sounded like the kitchen table. Tyler watched his brother see the truth of it, get past his fear of the creature and his father. Tom's eyes went to Michael, took in the fluttering eyes, ruined face dripping silver, but barely dripping now, looking thicker, duller somehow. Harlan was at the door now with something in his hands. Get away from him, Thomas. I'm ready now. Gonna send him back down. In his hand was something like an icicle. Its color streaked from white to gray along its length. Another nickel spike. Tyler knew it. Tyler spun and pulled the knife free from Michael's shoulder a second time. Michael reached for the knife, but Tyler batted the hand away, let the blade fall tip down, and grabbed it again in his hand, ignoring the way his arm shook as he put a hand over the gaping wound the blade had left in Michael's shoulder and stepped in between his shivering host body and his father's. He's no demon. He's made of the same stuff as us, except that metal is like cyanide to him. And, Papa, I can't let you do this. Please, he, he only brought you back so we... So, so you and me, I won't be tempted from my reward, boy. I loved you, boy. Tyler's stomach lurched at the raw emotion, the love and the fear and the betrayal in his father's voice. You were so smart, so good. I failed you, let you go wrong. He hefted the spike, weapon enough to kill human as much as silver, and stood straighter, nodding surely. Gonna make this right. Bring you with me to heaven. His gaze was one of love now, even promising death. Tyler saw the love, even as his body grew heavy and he sunk back against his charge, unable to do anything. He watched the love in his father that he could never speak in his life, even as he crouched to strike. Harlan's gaze turned to Tom, and he beckoned. Come here, boy. I won't lose you, too. Tyler turned his head. So hard to do all of a sudden, almost as hard as breathing or keeping the knife raised. The brothers locked eyes again, both stricken dumb. Tyler would try what he could, for the outcome was certain for him and Michael now. He jutted towards Harlan with his chin, and Tom opened his mouth to complain. Before he could get words out, Tyler slurred, Go on, the only way. Only way this can go. You, you go. Tom walked robotically away from the wall, stopped in front of his father, and then at Harlan's scat, he left the room. Harlan turned and listened to him go, and once the footsteps faded, he lifted the spike higher. You shouldn't have to watch me take you. Ain't like the good Lord. Ain't it just like the good Lord? To show me how to care for my family only after I've been dead. Harlan surged forward, batting away Tyler's feeble defensive stroke. Hitting his son's hand hard enough to send the knife flying, he slammed Tyler back against the wall and then waved him quiet with his own hand. I know, boy, I know, he said softly, and with love. I heard everything you said while I was sleeping. You said your goodbyes. The old man's eyes were brimming with tears. You're a good son, Tyke. Too bad I taught you all the wrong lessons. Harlan's hand raised up, the spike now above Tyler's heart. Michael's arm raced past Tyler's and pulled Harlan by the collar hard, smashing him into his son and into Michael in turn. Tyler felt the spike graze his arm before it smashed into the wall beside him. Harlan struggled, punishing Tyler's body and pushing more black from the corner of his visions until Tyler saw only Harlan, just his face, just one eye, weeping silver. No, the silver was crawling up his face, cresting over the eyelid and writhing inside. Harlan screamed. His hand reared back, the spike aimed for one last stab, when powerful hands, accustomed to millwork and the blade of an axe, wrapped around and squeezed until Harlan dropped the spike. 
Tyler's eyes winked closed even as his father's did for the last time. He may have dreamed the words. Goodbye, son. The first leaves of the season were falling when Tyler left his father's house for the last time. The morning sun had just cleared the top of the hill, and Michael was greeting Aunt Vida at the foot of it. She handed him a red and white kitchen towel and waved for Tyler to join them. He did, with Blue nipping at his side. Got some fresh biscuits here for your bus ride, Ty. Brought some for your friend, too. He says he eats just fine. Tyler laughed and pushed Blue's snuffling nose away from the biscuits in Michael's hands. This is most gracious of you, miss, the sturdy old woman growled. Aunt Vi, Michael corrected himself as Tom stomped down the porch stairs. And I do hope both you and your nephew Tom will visit our facility. I am sure the lieutenant would enjoy it as well. I figured they'd take him back. What with him saving your life twice now and all? Tom chuckled and picked at imaginary lint on the shoulder of his brother's fatigues as he approached. A smile crept onto his face. You can count on that visit. Somebody's got to keep Tyke in line. Tom's eyes darted to Michael's and then dropped guiltily. His smile faded as he made a fist, then relaxed it, and offered the hand to Michael. Uh, mister? The silver turned to Tom when addressed and shook his hand crisply. Look, I, I don't know how... Tom licked his lips. I'm sorry you couldn't come to the funeral and all. Lord, your hand's not near as cold as I thought it would... Tyler watched the handshake stretch on and cherished the look of open wonder on his brother's face. Tom chuckled, too, shaking his head in good-natured disbelief. Harlan's funeral had taken place the morning of the storm with just his brother, sister, and sons in attendance. Tyler had ordered Michael to sit in the ruins of Harlan's shattered home and later had been pleasantly surprised when Tom asked why the silver hadn't come. Blue continued to pirouette below the hand Michael held the biscuits in, and finally Vida shooed him away with a thundering cry, standing arms crossed between the animal and the object of his drooling affections. In a rare mark of canine intelligence, Blue didn't try the move again. I'll walk you to the bus, Vida said. Tom, you'll come too. Before Tom could nod, a high whine filled the air and a shadow moved across the brown homestead, whipping trees into surrendering more leaves. As a silver cigar-shaped ship slowed to a stop above the hill, Vida let out a shriek and Blue made for the tree line with a yelp. That's okay, Aunt Vi, Tyler called over the dying noise of the craft. I called for my own ride this time. Vida held her hand to her chest as displacement from the ship's drive sent curls of gray hair whipping across her cheeks and the grasses waving on the hill. Unimpressed by the revolutionary craft, she began to curse as the ship settled, now silent, atop the hill. I will await you aboard ship, Lieutenant. Farewell, Tom. Farewell, Aunt Vi. Michael bowed to each in turn and then started for the craft. Turning at the base of the lowering boarding ramp to wave before disappearing inside, buttermilk biscuits held reverently now in both hands. Tom clasped Tyler's forearm, holding it tight. Them critters seem to get you nearly killed about every week, don't they? He looked up the hill at the gleaming silver craft and slapped his younger brother on the shoulder. Go on, go make nice to your bosses. Tyler hesitated, voice lost at the prospect of ending this visit his last one to his family home. Go on, Tyke, the elder brother insisted in a soft tone. It won't be another six years till you see us again. You can bank on it. Tyler felt his exile end on the strength of that promise. He took a last deep breath of the country air and looked around in silent farewell to the land that had made him. He kissed his misty-eyed aunt nodded a heartfelt farewell too great for words, and climbed the hill for the last time. He said goodbye to Shooter County, to the land that had borne him and to his father. His feet were solid on the hillside. The rain had been greedily swallowed and locked away. From the top of the hill he could see Shooter County Cemetery and all the land that had survived his father. Harlan Brown had been six years dead to Tyler, 
but for one moment resurrected in the midst of a nightmare, and it had put the other nightmares to rest. Tom waved to him and whooped. Tyler waved back, a smile blooming on his face that only Tom could make, as he stepped on board, strapped in, and accepted a muffin from the alien seated next to him. Michael, take the paper off. No, take the paper off before you... Here, let me show you. Harlan's Wake Part 4 Finale